It's Taste of Country Nights with Evan Paul, On Demand, Season 3, Episode 2 with Kenny Chesney. Recently, you did like a pop-up, uh, like a low-key bar show in Key West a couple months ago. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we, it wasn't a show. I just kind of—I was kinda in shit. there, and and the, the the guitar player was in the corner, you know, playing. He goes, "Are you Kenny?" I went, "Yeah." And he goes, "Do you want to play?" And I went, "Well, I've had a few. I don't know if it, I don't know if, that's, if I should do that or not." But I I, I got up and and um, and did you in tequila. Man, it was so fun to get to sit down with Kenny Chesney. I got to go on location and uh, record with him at a recording studio. Such a such a good dude. We can really get into it in this interview and talk about life and music and where he's headed, you know, and, and his career in the past. As always, in advance, I'd like to thank you so much for giving this podcast episode a listen. You can go back and check it out. Recent guests uh, we've had at Taste Country Nights on Demand. Craig Campbell was in the studio. Walker Hayes. Toby Keith, Dolly Parton, Garth Brooks, Jelly Roll, all those. Just search for Taste of Country Nights on demand wherever you get your podcasts. All right, we're hanging out with the one and only Kenny Chesney. How's it going, man? It's going good, man. Going man, good. good to see you. I'm loving the new song. I'm loving it. Can you give me the Thanks. story behind Take Her Home? Yeah, I was um, at the house the other day and got a text from Hardy. He goes, me and the guys wrote uh, a song with you in mind. Would you mind listening to it? And I went, yeah. yeah, when you get that text from Hardy, you're going to listen to it, right? <laughs> so I listened to it and I went, wow. In my, in my head, I knew it was um, a song that I had been looking for for a while and that I was obviously very well done. But in my heart, I knew that, that um, it had a really good chance of resonating with my audience because even though I haven't lived every single part of this song, I look out at my audience and it, it, I, I realize that there's people out there that, uh, that have lived the majority of it, mm -hmm. you know, and I went, wow, what a song, you know, melodically, yeah. sonically, uh, just, and I've been, I've been looking for that for a while, you know, and I haven't had, I haven't had, uh, one of those life moment songs in a while. Hardy songs always take like a turn, like, like the third yeah. verse, like it's semi unexpected. If, if yeah. you know, um, are you going to seek out more of his songs? Like after something like oh, this, I, maybe, I mean, <laughs> we'll see, <laughs> see how it does. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's there. Do you know what inspired it, the, him to write it? You know, I, I feel like that it's, like I said, I, I, it's, it's just one of those life moment songs where you yeah. can either take advantage of that moment and see where, where that moment takes you, you know, cause it's, 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 um, you have to man up in a way to, to bring somebody a shot of tequila and introduce yourself. Yeah. You now do. you can either not do it and just your life will go and do its, you know, uh, whatever path it's going to go on. Right. Or like the character in the song, it, it, his life plays out in a completely different way because of that one moment. And that's what I think is very powerful about Take Her Home. Um, let me also ask you, like, uh, can you give us a scoop on, on a new album? Like, Well, there's one coming at some point. Okay. I mean, I don't know what it's, I don't know the scope of it yet. I just know I got a lot of songs cut. How many would, would you know, we say like you're sitting on right now that are there in the tank that could go a lot? I mean, I don't know. I have to count, but a lot, you know, I've been recording for a while, but we'll see. I, I, I know take her home is going to be on there, Yeah, you know, and I know that, um, uh, it, there's going to, it's going to be, uh, an album, um, full of stories. It's going to be an album full of rock and energy and it's going to be in, it's just, it's just, it's just going to be life, you know? And, and, but I'm still trying to figure out, where all the pieces fit, you know, and I don't, I don't, even, I don't even know that I'm done yet. I'll be honest with you. Well, let me ask you, as someone that's recorded so many songs, like they're all your babies. I know yeah. you finished all the ones that are wrapped up and just ready to, to go that are mastered. Is there going to be a day where you're not going to want to record anything new and, and you're going to want to get those out? Uh, are you ever going to want to get those out for everyone to hear? Or are there some that you're holding on to that are just, you're just never going to get out there? Well, I hope to get them out there at some point, obviously, but it just depends on wh which, for me, it depends on which way, which turn the record takes. You know, the creative process for me is always pretty wide open. You know, when I'm, when I start a record, um, it's, you'll see, okay, well, unless it's, unless it's on purpose, more of an acoustic island record that I've done in the past, mm -hmm. which then I know, well, 
this is going to be the direction. Got it. But if I go and and, and like, like this this current one that I'm working on, there's going to be a lot of it that's going to obviously sound great in the live stadium or arena element. But then there's also a part of this where, oh wow, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of life in this. That's that's, that's a lot of life mm-hmm. in this, you know. So I'm 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 just trying to figure out the balance of all of that, and it'll come, you know. We'll, we'll see. Um, recently you did like a pop-up, uh, like a low key bar show in Key West a couple months ago. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, it wasn't a show. I just kind of, I was in shook. there and, and the, the, the guitar player, it was in the corner, you know, playing. He goes, are you Kenny? I went, yeah. And he goes, do you want to play? And I went, well, I've had a few. I don't know if I, I don't know if, that's, if I should do that or not, but I, I, I got up and, and, um, and did you in tequila, but it, it looked like a pop-up show, but it was just a pop-up song. How often does that happen to you? And, and can you ever like d- get through that and like get through low key somewhere and get out and not do a show like that? Or does that happen yeah, every no, time? I can do it more than I can. I could do that more than you think, you know, but, um, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was just a bar in the keys. There wasn't a lot of people in there. Yeah. You know, and, and uh it was a cool moment. You know, I, I had fun doing it and and it was at a bar called Captain Tony's, which is always historically a very wonderful creative uh place that or, or a place that creative people go to. So it felt cool to do it in there. What's the difference between you've played obviously the biggest the biggest stadiums to, mm-hmm. to smaller gigs? Like what do you what are the pros and cons? What do you miss? Well, it's the, they're both I mean, it's it's two different two different animals, you know, to go to a stadium show that when I first started doing stadium shows, I went, wow, there's a lot more ground to cover. You know, I, I got to the point where we felt really good in arenas and we'd worked our way up to that point. And then we started going to the stadiums and that's a whole different, you know, different level. And, and, um, but we've been doing the stadiums now since 2005. It's crazy to think about. So in the, in the, in the, planning and in the, in the of, the of the production and the, in the planning of the set list i i i've got, in my in my brain i'm going okay how good a shape are you going to have to be in to do this and it's always <laughs> i got to be <laughs> you know the music's one thing but yeah. you know even as a child as, when i would hear music i would just move and so it's a that's a kind of a a constant annoyance for anybody me. if it helps anybody i've ever talked to that's gone on tour with you yeah. like carly pierce and people they always talk about your cardio and they're always like i gotta get my cardio up <laughs> when i go on tour kenny you don't, you don't realize how big his stage is until you get out there and see him and he's not just standing there he's wall to wall so Ken, there's other yeah. people that admire like that worth work ethic of you well, on stage how does that kind of lead into you like is that a legacy see you want to pass on to the next generation well i mean i i you know everybody does their shows the way they do them you know and if i i, I we try to put as much energy and well not just energy but positive energy mm. into our show as possible and that's one thing i would love to pass on to everybody yeah you know yeah. <laughs> you know but i mean everybody gets on stage and performs the way they perform and the way their heart and mind tells them to do it mm-hmm. mine I, I just get so in in the middle of the music. And when you have the band that I do, when you're up there with these songs and you see how these songs touch everybody out in the audience and it's just this wonderful shared moment, you just want to give them every single cell of your body. And that's that's just the way I feel. Are you doing anything for the 30th anniversary of your debut album coming up? Well, I I don't know yet. Uh, it's crazy to think about, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, for yeah. me, it is. I don't yeah. know. Is it crazy for you? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's um, <laughs> it, it's crazy. You know, I, I, hopefully I'll be writing a song somewhere to celebrate it. You know, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? All right. Awesome, man. Well, we love the song. And Thank you, uh, appreciate you taking time to talk to us, man. Yeah, brother. Appreciate it. All right. Let's bring in Billy Dukes from behind the camera to talk about this interview here with Kenny Chesney. I kind of feel like maybe you surprised him when you asked the question about his 30th anniversary. Like maybe he hadn't quite done the math to realize it's been 30 oh, years. Let me tell you, man, I did. I was in the, I was basically in a recording studio with Kenny Chesney and one of his record uh, people. And when I said that, I thought that maybe I had the wrong information because he didn't react like, and they were both looking at each other like, wait, what? And, 
And I was like, yeah, it's, it's, and I had to act like I was confident enough. I was like, yeah, it's 30 years, man. And he's like, wow, it's been that long. Like they, and even after we turned the mics off, they were like, can you believe it's been that long? And then they were discussing, like, uh, I guess it, maybe it was on a different label. And he was like, oh, that was on blah, blah, blah days. And she was like, yeah, I think so. Y- you're right. They were caught off guard by that. I th- he started, I think, on Capricorn Records, but that like merged into something and then something else, and then. Um, that's what he it, said. That's what he said. Capricorn, I believe. I think he said that's when we were on Capricorn, and that's when I got to be honest. I mean, I was like, I this is well beyond my knowledge, so I just kind of backed into the uh huh uh huh that mode, you know. Well, Kenny Chesney is, I mean, two two sort of thoughts on this. First of all, like, Kenny Chesney is representative of, the, like, a time when an artist was given, like, a few albums to sort of make it. Like, you could release two or even three albums and maybe only have a couple of moderate hits and then still pop off in a really big way. Reba did sort of the same thing. I think she was around for six or seven years before she really sort of took off, like, you don't get that anymore. Like an artist gets like two or three singles and then they're sort of shuffled aside. That's interesting. I didn't really, I didn't really know that. That's so, so he had to do, so like they would sign out of the gate. They would be like, okay, this is a three album contract. And then it didn't matter if they were all stiffs. They had to do three albums. I don't know necessarily if like he signed like a multi album deal. I mean, he may have, but like, they were just more patient with them. Like they would understand like, okay, well the music's good. We just haven't figured out the marketing or haven't gotten the right song. Wow. Cause if you go back and look at like all of those early Kenny Chesney singles, uh, you'd have to be kind of a pretty big Kenny Chesney fan to recognize any of them. They're not like the, like his biggest songs didn't come to like the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. That's crazy to me, man. The It's definitely changed. Times have changed. Like from what I understand now, like, You'll get a single, and if you get if it hits and you get another one going, maybe they'll give you an EP, which is an right. extended whatever, and then maybe you'll get an album. Like it's tough nowadays. The, the other thing that with Kenny Chesney, and, and I'm always sort of talk whenever I talk about like country artists who may not want to be in the call, Hall of Fame quite yet. I'm kind of thinking of Kenny Chesney because it has been 30 years, and he's obviously had a, a Hall of Fame worthy career. But he's still very, very active and considers himself a contemporary artist. And he is. He's releasing new singles and running them up the charts. And he's still selling more concert tickets than just about anybody. So, like, to go in the Hall of Fame at this point in his career would almost sort of signify or, or signal sort of a a ramping down of movement. Like, admit he's getting a little bit old. Like, I don't know if he would embrace a Hall of Fame nomination at, at this point in his career. You know, um, I agree with you. And and Dirks Bentley, you were here for that. He's kind of the same way, too, when we brought Mm -hmm. that up. Like, hey, man, it's been 20 years. You're not eligible. I think that's a great point. I think that, um, I mean, in sports, you don't make the Hall of Fame while you're you're still going, you know? So has it ever happened in country music? Yeah. Uh, Garth Brooks um, made it. uh, I think early 2010 or so, I think he went in. Wow. Um, or, or fairly early on, and he's he's continued to thrive. And then like George Strait, Ruben McIntyre, but both of them were, were pretty well advanced in age, I guess, by the time they got into the Hall of Fame. But uh, yeah, it's usually kind of an old man's game. It's like when you're kind of retired and able to, and willing to sort of look back on your career. And, and I don't know if that's where, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, actually, when we talk about this, uh, what we're going to do next. But um, I, I think there's some artists like Kenny who are, are maybe transitioning into thinking maybe it's time to look back a little bit. Yeah, and what Billy's talking about, we're going to get into this article at tasteofcountry.com about nine bold country music predictions for 2024. Um, you want to jump into that? Yeah, let's let's dive right into it. Okay, because a lot of people have been talking about these um, on different sites. Like, I've seen this on other outlets. People have picked up on your guys' predictions. There are some here that I... I don't know if I agree with. I'm glad I don't. I don't know if I was a part of this. I'm glad I wasn't. Okay, the <laughs> top nine predictions of uh, 2024, the most bold country music predictions. The first one is that Rascal Flats will reunite. Okay, so of course Joe Don Rooney's sober now, um, 
and uh, time has passed by. Yeah, they didn't get to complete their tour. You know, they their retirement tour. I could see that happening. I thought they didn't get the just the the due diligence of a proper retirement for such a big group due to the COVID and everything. Yeah, I don't think this prediction is is too too crazy, especially now that we know that Joe Don is sort of uh, he's back with it and. You know, it was interesting when kind of following Joe Don Rooney's divorce a little bit, it became clear that money problems were a part of his life. So, like, he might be financially motivated to get back on road on the road. And I don't think the other guys necessarily would turn down those paychecks either. Uh, and you're right. They didn't get, you know, COVID canceled their farewell tour. So they never got sort of that big goodbye from their fans. Uh, could they? I don't know that they could fill up, like, arenas necessarily. But they could do like maybe, I don't know, seven thousand seat venues. I mean, I think is that something they would want to do? Like after doing arenas and stuff, or do do you call it a clean quit right now? And that's that's the tough part. Is like, do you crank it back up? And then what if people aren't as into it? I think that's still a pretty good show. Like you can do like maybe a five to seven thousand seat amphitheater or even a small arena and still bring a pretty good production and you're playing for a sold out audience like i think that would still be pretty satisfying for them another bold country music prediction for 2024 jelly roll will be country's big grammy winner um tell me more about this okay so the grammy's coming up i believe early February, and he is the uh, only country artist nominated this year in the Best New Artist Grammy category. And this is the all-genre thing. Uh, Off the Mm -hmm. top of my head, I don't remember who some of the other nominees are. Um, And he's nominated in some other country-specific awards as well. Um, Save Me with Laney Wilson is nominated, and I think he's got a really good shot of winning that. Uh, But when you start to look at... like I always look at award shows, like especially as it pertains to country, like where are the votes coming from? Like traditionally, like the most conservative traditional country artists don't get a lot of votes because the Grammys invite a lot of sort of pop vote or people from other genres. So by definition, I think it's going to be people who are maybe a, a little more liberal than the country voter, the CMA voter. Um, and I'm kind of referring to their political ide- ideology, but also people who have sort of an awareness of other genres. And Jelly has had, you know, he's been all over rock music this year. He's had a number one rock song. Hip-hop fans still love him. Uh, I mean, just within our company, I think, we have some other sort of genre-specific websites like Double XL and Loudwire, and they both covered him and, and featured him prominently. So I think he just... There's just awareness of Jelly Roll in many different genres, and I think that's why I believe he'll be the first new artist winner since Zach Brown Band in 2009 uh, to come from country music. It's been a long time. Yeah, why are they hating on country so bad, man? It's like 15 years. We haven't even really had that many nominees in this category, and it's always sort of a big deal. Like They call it like the big five categories at the Grammys, and there's just not been a lot of... Like Casey Musgraves, she she got Best Album and Best Artist, I think, three or four years ago. But she was even sort of... Like, you can kind of see, like, she's more of that liberal sort of thinking, sort of multi-genre artist. Um, Jimmy Allen, when he was nominated, I'm not sure how much love he got. And then there's been a few others that I don't think had a real great shot, but... um, And there's more nominees in the category, too. So I think that kind of spreads the vote for if there's like three or four hip hop artists, like the vote's going to get spread across those artists that might benefit someone like Jelly Roll. All right. We're talking about the uh, nine bold country music predictions for 2024 at tasteofcountry.com. This is the one that I don't really agree with. Uh, One of the bold predictions is that Oliver Anthony will begin a very Scotty McCreary like career path. I don't think he's this guy is going anywhere near a Scotty McCreary. Like, no way. Admittedly, it requires a little bit of an explanation. Um, There's and, no and, way. Now, okay, what part of that offends you, though? Like, what does Scotty do that you don't think Oliver? Because we may actually agree and disagree. Well, I don't think that Oliver wants to be. I don't think he wants to be that forefront in like music. I don't. I don't know that he wants to be like someone that gets told where to go, what to do, and things like that. And then I also don't think like he's Scotty McCreary records like a lot of deep songs and then a lot of like love songs. Like I don't see anything. I don't see Oliver Anthony doing that. And and I don't. 
I just Scotty McCreary to me is like just a good old boy. Like I, I don't think I think Oliver Anthony is looking to cause some like um he's looking to trend with every song, I think. Sure. I think he's you know. He's looking to create a little chaos. Yeah, I don't and I I think that's the opposite of Scotty McCreary. Like I think Scotty McCreary is just riding, you know, in in the center lane. He's not in the left or the right. So I agree with you that personality wise and stylistically, these two artists are really pretty different. More what I'm referring to is that like both of them did the biggest thing they're ever gonna do right at the very beginning of their career. Okay, and, so Scotty with Idol, and then Oliver with the that's just trending right out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, number he was the first person ever to debut at number one on the Hot 100, like ever. Like uh, that, that is a like you literally. I don't know that you can get any bigger than that, but I think both of them are probably right after. They're they're going to be trying to climb back up to a, a peak that's similar um professionally if that appeals to them and, and i know they'll say you know oliver will certainly say that chart success doesn't matter and the numbers don't matter but like relevance matters so just maintaining that sort of sense of relevance and i think also like there's a lot of people who are gonna hate oliver anthony like no matter what he comes with next it could be like yeah. the best most on point song and people like you get these kind of woke music critics and, I, and I've been there a little bit, I guess, who, are, who almost have like the album review written before it's even released. And that goes both ways. If you get an artist that they really, really love, they, they have, they're ready to heap praise on them. But if you get a really conservative artist, they're ready to just sort of criticize the hell out of them. Scotty experienced that, I think, because there was some resentment to a, a reality television show winners back when he won in 2011 that like people were just sort of ready to lambaste him. No matter what he released, like it, it didn't matter. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, so they'll be kind of fighting and clawing to get with respect within the community if they want it. The thing is, like, I don't think Oliver Anthony will like even lean into like the Nashville music making machine at all. No, yeah, not at all. I don't, I don't think he's gonna have a label. I think it's gonna be like his his buddy's gonna book him and uh, you know continue to book him. I think it's gonna be like. Uh, like well, I was gonna say like Tommy DeVito from the New York Giants is agent, but that's, that's <laughs> two in the woods. But it's I think it's just gonna be some backwoods stuff where it's like, but right. I think it's just gonna start trailing off. It's gonna be like he's gonna end up doing like local wrestling shows. Yeah, I mean, I mean where does that leave him if he doesn't sort of embrace sort of the, like it leaves him back what he where is. he was, where he wants to be, untouched. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, when it, it's a law of physics that you're either going forward or backwards, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, if he doesn't find some ways to grow, he's just kind of going to become uh, a, a, a more famous version of of what he was, which isn't relevant. You know, that that's not something people are paying attention to. And he, I think he actually may have like a perspective that's pretty valuable, and like he kind of even owes it to his fans to do everything he can to get that perspective to as many years as possible. If he doesn't do that, I think he's not only hurting his own career, which he may not care about, but like that's eliminating that perspective. And I think that's kind of unfortunate. He's an inside out sock. You know, he, he doesn't want the, he came out number one and that's not what he wants. So it's like, uh Oh, like, right. what do you do now? Um, yeah. Bold country music predictions for 2024. One of them is that Morgan Wallen will drop a surprise album. I think that's uh, an easy one. I think, you know, yeah, of course, I'm sure he will. You, you know, the interesting thing about these predictions is we were really careful not to, like, just kind of take the easy way out by saying so-and-so is going to be the biggest artist of the year or so-and-so will release new music when we already know they're going to release a new album. Like, we know, like, um, Cody Johnson's coming with a new album. Well, that's not a prediction. Like, I, I didn't want to just kind of... So this one is sort of like a... I don't have any insider information about Morgan Wallen working on a new album. He's presumably always working on new songs, and I think he's even maybe revealed a few. But, like, the path he's on is similar to the path Eric Church was on, where, like, you kind of have to keep surprising him now if you're Morgan Wallen. Like, what can you do next that's sort of... If he just releases another 35 songs after a long promotional experience, well, that's almost 
That's unremarkable. But if he releases a surprise album, that's like, whoa, we got to get these. And then that spikes the streaming charts. You know, all of a sudden he goes nuts. He debuts at number one. He sets new sort of streaming chart records. And that seems to be really important to sort of who he is and what his label is all about. They're all about sort of working that chart system, that streaming chart system in a way to their favor. And I, I think a surprise new album would do that. Country music's Beyonce. I mean, he's got to, that's how he's got to drop albums now. Like Taylor Swift, man. He's just, it's just got to happen at 1201. Nobody you, knows. Yeah. And you're that famous, you know, people are going to buy the, the, everything out of that. You know, people are going to buy that no matter what. So, yeah. Um, I made that, I made that Beyonce reference in the article. Did you understand what I meant by that? Like, yeah. Is that, kind of insidery like she was the first one really to sort of drop a surprise album yeah and it's I, been almost I, a decade i was on pop radio when it happened it, it was like throw away all the show prep that you did last night beyonce dropped a surprise album that's all you're talking right. about um okay next on nine bold country music predictions of 2024 um T will be made a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame. Now, T stands for Tim McGraw, Toby Keith, and Trisha Yearwood. Okay, so going back on what we were talking about earlier, Tim McGraw is is still very current, right? Do you think that would mess up his career? I felt a little bit bad for not just making, picking one of the three. Like, I should have just threw a dart. Um, And if I had to, I would say it's going to be Trisha Yearwood. Um, but yeah, so to answer your question, like I do think Tim McGraw maybe has sort of turned that corner a little bit, or maybe he's willing to get a little bit, think more about his legacy and some perspective. Um, he's been around almost as long as Kenny Chesney has, if not a little bit longer, like they're very similar timelines. Uh, Tim McGraw was a much bigger artist before Kenny Chesney was, um, so I think that's very possible. I know Trisha Yearwood was someone very much in consideration in years past. I've had people tell me that. And then Toby Keith, I don't know if he was necessarily, but I think kind of given his health battle and the uncertainty there, like that's kind of motivation for maybe to induct him sooner than later. Because I mean, let's be honest, all three, I think are worthy of getting inducted into the country music hall of fame. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I I don't know. if Do you think Trisha you think she's you think she's got enough juice to get in there? I do. Yeah. I mean when you go look at like her catalog in the 90s and like the influence she has had, like it doesn't like the women in country music tend to have like shorter commercial careers, so like their influence becomes a lot more important. Um but she had a lot of hits and she's really well respected and um she treats the genre really well. And, and I think she'll get in for this. This is why I think Dirks Bentley will get in. It's not necessarily because of his catalog, but, but because of his catalog and how he sort of approaches the format and how well res- respected and how, how generous he is. Like, okay. People end up making these decisions. It's not based on an algorithm. So if they really, really like you and respect you, you're going to have a little bit of a better shot. Uh, that's why it took Hank Williams Jr. so long to get in is because you know, he didn't necessarily treat everybody great on his way uh, up. Does philanthropy like help? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So like Miranda, does. Miranda's got a seat for sure one day, right? Oh, I think so. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, contemporary artists that I think are, are no doubters uh, for the hall of fame, Miranda, Carrie, um, I mean, Jason Aldean, Luke Bryan, eventually Eric church. Um, uh, who else? Jay Kobe Cohen? Keith. No, I don't think Jake Owen gets in. Um, uh, Dirk Bentley, I think, does get in, but probably not immediately. Um, maybe some other women that get in. Taylor Swift, I think, eventually will get into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Shania Twain. Um, Blake Shelton, I think, eventually will, although I don't think it'll be as easy maybe as uh, some other artists. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about Blake. I don't know. He's had a lot of hits, and he and he and I think his fame with the voice and everything I think kind of makes him eligible. But uh, when you look at his catalog, it's not quite as deep as some of those other mm-hmm. artists I just mentioned. All right, uh, nine c- bold country music predictions for 2024 that we haven't met the breakout artists of 2024 yet. They kind of seem to come out of nowhere, don't they? They do. So who is that going to be? I don't. I don't know. 
Um, but they're probably on TikTok somewhere, like just uploading covers. Yeah, you know what's crazy is like, yeah, on I get I get I see so much stuff on Instagram. It's like there's there's so many there are so many artists out there that are doing that are country artists that are in vans just traveling like their moms running the show selling merch like anyone and they're all good. I it's just crazy to me that only certain one of the certain ones of them get seated here to get interviewed that make it you know and you just never know which one is going to break out i think you're right in today's day and age it's going to be something viral not necessarily that's not bad like look at like nate smith you know right so uh, but i think it's going to be someone that originates viral that's going to get signed to a label and but i don't know i thought like uh i thought that would happen with a couple artists last year, and they didn't really pan out. The, the artists that had a viral success that didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, they got signed, and then they're just kind of idling. Uh, who do you who do you mean? Because I mean, there, sometimes there's reasons for this, like Priscilla Block. Sure, uh, she I, they're releasing music with her. You know, she did the duet with Justin Moore that was a number one hit. Like, I think she's still following the path. She just hasn't blown up. Like Laney Wilson blew up after the Brantley Gilbert duet. Okay, like, it might just need a little bit more time with her, and the music's been there. I think sometimes people see an artist perform live and realize, and I'm not necessarily speaking about Priscilla, but I think sometimes their live art, their live performance betrays them, and it becomes really clear that they're not ready um, to take that next step. And and I can think of one specific artist. I'm not going to mention him or her, but like that you, you see this person live and it's like, oh, yeah, they, they need to cook a little bit longer before we can kind of consider them a a, a superstar. Yeah, I mean, there's something to the saying of 10-year town. Like, you got to mm-hmm. put in your time and learn how to get confident behind the microphone. Um, yeah. It's different than TikTok. Um, uh, bold predictions of 2024 country music. A new Zach will emerge. Zach Top is his name. Uh, oddly enough, in the past week, I've heard his name a couple times. What what do you think this guy is the guy? Oh, and by the way, we were talking about Jake Owen a minute ago. Shout out to Jake Owen for recognizing Zach Top. He's the one that kind of put him up in the forefront there. Yeah, a little bit. And actually, as I uh, just a few hours before we recorded this, Zach Top released a new radio single uh, called "Sounds Like the Radio." It's from a record label I, I don't recognize, Leo Thirty Three Records, kind of independent yeah. label. Um, I have a feeling he'll probably get scooped up by one of these majors before too too long um but he, he, you know all right first of all that's a great song for a radio single sounds like the radio because radio loves when you sort of talk <laughs> about radio in a song in a complimentary way like it's yeah. just always a way, a way to get ahead but he's just got like a really clean traditional sound and I, I i like to say like the best way to sort of make it in country music and to have some sustained success is to appeal to the blue hairs Mm-hmm. Cracker <laughs> and that barrel mean, ladies. You, if you get the older audience on board, like, first of all, they spend money, right? So you're going to be able to make it a little bit more. Yeah. But they'll stick with you for a really long time. Well, um, as long as they got left. Sure. <laughs> That's dark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Dirks Bentley did this. Chris Young did this. Scotty McCreary certainly did this. Yes. Like, even if your career kind of levels off, they'll be there with you until you kind of get it together. And this Zach Top Kid, he's like 25, handsome, right? He's got a traditional sound. Yeah. Like, he seems like a guy you would want your granddaughter to date. And I don't know the kid yet, but like, and his voice is great. And the music's really strong. So I think he's just got a lot of things working for him that like, he could be like the traditionalist we sort of turn to along with like a Cody Johnson type. That's fair. Okay. Uh, another bold country music prediction, the CMA Entertainer of the Year will be Luke Combs, Chris Stapleton, Laney Wilson, possibly, Jelly Roll, Cody Johnson in there. So we, we passed over one that I don't think takes a lot of conversation, and that's just that Morgan Wallen's going to continue to be shut out at awards show. Yeah. At award shows, and I think that's why I don't necessarily include him in this list of, of possibles, because I don't know that, right or wrong, I don't think he'll get his shot. I think he'll get nominated, but Morgan won't get the win this year. I, I think it's going to be Luke Combs. And the reason I say that is the only thing I've figured out about award show voting the last, really since the pandemic, is that 
people like to vote for the artist that makes them feel the best at that moment. Like if you have a good story that people are all on board with, um, Carly Pierce certainly did. Lainey Wilson certainly does. Luke Combs, very lovable. You see yourself in Luke Combs and he's done all the work in terms of media. Like that gets the vote. Jelly Roll, another one. Not saying they're not deserving. I'm just saying that that really helps you sort of win some of those awards. And I think Luke Combs has all of that. And then, you know, combine that with some new music and continued success on the road. I think by November he'll be, uh, uh, if not a favorite, a, a, a really, if not if not the odds on choice or, or the obvious choice, uh, maybe even a little bit of a, a voting favorite to win that award. For which okay. will be his third time, I think, if he wins it. That's fair. I mean, I I wouldn't have thought that Jelly Roll could be in that conversation, but man, I mean, he could be. I mean, I think Laney Wilson winning this year kind of opened that up for everybody to show that, you know, you don't have to be a blue hair to win, per se, in the industry, you know. Um, But man, Carrie Underwood, like, they just need to throw her a bone. She's got to get in there one of these years, man. Well, I agree. I don't agree. I agree and I don't. And here, here's why. Like, I think Carrie Underwood needs to have... I, I 100% think Carrie Underwood should have won it within the last five years. Like, after one of these tour years when she was really in cycle with an album and a tour, like, she was the deserving winner, in my opinion. So, yes, she has been snubbed in the past. But right now, like, I don't know that a tour is coming. Her music isn't cracking at radio. Um She's not doing a ton of media, so she's not sort of ingratiating herself. And that sounds bad, but, like, I think that's important. Like, when people do the media interviews, it reminds people how much they liked you and why they liked you on a personal level. And I think that counts and helps you get votes. But, like, we're getting a lot of plants. Like, literally, her garden is front and center on her Instagram page. Yeah. I need to see, like, her sort of embrace it a little bit more and i don't i don't i just don't think she is so while i think she has deserved it in years past unless things really change i don't think she's on track to win it this year i would say the same for al dean too the the fact that he doesn't like go to the show i think that's that just i don't know why i think that i think yeah. he just never goes i think they're never gonna let him win well, Al Dean is almost like a Morgan Wallen in that he's kind of a little polarizing. He does a ton of interviews, and he's won several ACM Entertainer of the Years, but for whatever reason, the CMAs have decided he's not their boy. But he uh, does, like, is, CMA Radio Row and all that. He does, like, their yeah. interviews and stuff, but, yeah, he just doesn't ever – he's, like, never – I don't think since I've been here in five years he's been on any ballot other than maybe a song or something here and there. He hasn't, yeah, he hasn't really done great at the CMAs. But the ACM is a different story. He has, he, you know, he's gotten nominated. You know, it's just sort of that old generation that's kind of getting like him and Luke Combs and Blake Shelton, like those artists that were dominating um, five to ten years ago are kind of getting replaced now by this next generation that includes Luke Combs and Morgan Wallen, Jelly Roll, Lainey Wilson. Like it's just sort of a... A pretty major turnover, I think, in the last five years. These are the nine bold country music predictions of 2024. Now, you can read more about that at tasteofcountry.com or on your free Taste of Country app. And thank you, as always, for listening to Taste of Country Nights with Evan Paul On Demand, part of the Town Square Media Podcast Network.